Okay, let's watch some Bollywood physics. I, I would like to say, I don't really watch Bollywood movies, but I have seen these clips online and they are pretty awesome. Um, in, in, a, in these Bollywood movies, they seem to really take things to the extreme and I appreciate that. I think it's cool. It doesn't have to be the best physics. It's imaginative. Okay, so with that being said, let's jump in and look at this first clip. Okay, so a car flips over this girl and he gives her a flower. Um, the, the first thing that I think about is this. So here's my car. You like that? That's my car. Now, if it's sliding this way, uh, then we have this at the center of mass. So that's the gravitational force right there. Uh, there's two forces pushing up here, but there's a force pushing sideways right there. So can this thing tip over? Absolutely. Because if you think of this in terms of a system, if there's torque about the center of mass, then it can flip over. So cars can flip over. And the higher the center of mass is, the greater the torque on the side force and the more likely it is to flip over. Now, but here's the problem. Let's, how do you get it to go like that? In order to go from here, moving this way with some velocity, to just later moving this way with the velocity so that it can go in that arc, you have to push upward. There has to be an upward pushing force. Now, what is that force that pushes it up and makes it go into an arc? Um, if you hit a ramp, you could do that. Uh, if there's like something that poked up, it could do that. I guess if you had like uh, shocks on your car and the, the shocks expand and pushes it up like jumps, they have those cars that do that. That could be possible. Um, but now the other thing is the car needs to rotate with an angular velocity so that it goes, we can calculate the height that it goes and how long that would take and then how fast it'd have to flip. Um, so. I mean, it's not completely crazy. Uh, the, the main thing is how would you get that car up in the air? Uh, and it'd be kind of risky to maybe hit that, that girl. Okay, let's look at another clip. Ah! Okay, right away. I, I see these guys on this on this tree launcher, okay? So let's say we have our ground, and here's my tree, and then I have a guy right here, I have a guy right here, I have a guy right here, and they're all holding hands. And then this thing gets launched into the air. The problem is that this guy is going to end up going faster than this guy. So even though they're all holding hands, they have to pull each other along, which maybe that's possible, but that's what I'm thinking right there. Now, here's the fun homework problem. So estimate this distance and estimate the launch velocity that you would need to go, let's say 300 meters or something like that at a 45 degree angle, make it as easy as possible. So what's the acceleration needed to get that velocity? And would it be beyond the human possible acceleration? Um, that would be the one thing I would look at right there. So could you launch with a tree? Yes. Um, what about the acceleration that it would take to get that far? I mean, I don't think you'd go that far. But I, you know, you, you have those, uh, those people shot out of a cannon. It's kind of the same thing and they go pretty far. So I don't think it's completely crazy uh, holding on with all the people, that would be kind of crazy. Let's look at another one. Oh, I, I have this graph. I'll show it to you right here. And, and this is the NASA uh, G-force tolerance graph. I, I love it. So it shows, based on different body positions, what's the maximum amount of acceleration you can withstand without having damage. Uh, and it's approximate, okay, so it's approximate, every person's different. And that's on Wikipedia, so the link's right there. You should go look at it, it's a great graph. Okay, this is the same scene. After these guys get launched, they form a little shield ball and they land. So here we have 
So here we have uh, a problem. If I have my shield ball moving with a velocity and then shield ball stops, then we have, again, an acceleration. But the problem here is the acceleration is very short distance. Even if it compresses a little bit, that short distance is gonna be a very, very high impact acceleration and, and they're probably not gonna survive it. That's just my guess. But you could, again, you could estimate the initial and final velocities and calculate the distance over, and estimate the distance and maybe get, an, an, maybe get a good approximation for that acceleration. Okay, here's another one. There's, two, there's a couple important things here. Number one, the guy kicks another guy. Okay, and yeah, you couldn't kick him that hard. If you could, if you exerted a very large horizontal force on that guy, you would get pushed back. So that's the one problem right there. But here's the real problem. He kicks him, and then when he's right here, he jumps to get on top of him and then jumps off, which is really kind of cool. The problem is that in order to do that, he would have to run so fast to first kick him and then catch up to where he kicked him. That's the big problem right there. Uh, what about this? If he is jumping on a person, is that possible? Yeah, that's possible because he could push down on the person, the person pushes back up with the same force but in the opposite direction and that would give him a little boost. It, it would be pretty tough because you have to push so quick because the guy's falling too. Okay, so. This is a, a pretty, a really, I think, a creative scene. Um, but again, the physics is a, is a problem. I need a new marker. Okay, next scene. Okay, could you throw a gun? Yes. Could you stick that gun in a tree when it hits? That would be really tough. But I mean, it's not impossible. I mean, the gun could hit in there. That's fine. Um, could you then shoot your gun to hit the trigger of the gun that you stuck in the tree to make that gun shoot? I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, but if you could aim that well to hit that trigger, I think you could do a whole bunch of other things. It's still it's creative and obviously not even trying to be plausible, but that was kind of fun, so. Okay, here is a helicopter. Now notice how the helicopter's flying. So here's the problem with that one. Suppose I have a helicopter. That marker's even worse, look at that. Okay, so suppose I have a helicopter like this. Right there. So if it's tilted like that, then we get a thrust from the prop going this way, F thrust. And then there's a gravitational force pulling down. And if it's moving at a very slow speed, then I could say, what's the net force in the X and the Y direction? Well, in the Y direction, the, these forces cancel, right? I can have a component of this force, a Y component, oh my, that marker's dead. I can have a Y component of force and an X component of force, and those two could cancel and they'd be all fine. But what about in the X direction? In the X direction, I only have one force. So I have this, F net X equals F T X equals M A X. So there would have to be an acceleration in the X direction. If there's an, ex so now that helicopter can't just move along slowly like that, it'd have to be keep on speeding up. So that's the problem right there. Helicopters can't fly uh, tilted like that, I don't think, uh, at a slow, constant speed. Although it does look really cool. Okay. 
So there's this jet and the, the landing gear didn't go all the way down. So this guy's gonna save the jet and he runs and jumps from one building to another and then jumps on top of the aircraft. Uh, so again, this is a great physics problem. You can do this as a homework. Oh, and then he, then he lands and he kind of uh, acts as a spring uh, for the thing. So here's a building, here's another building, here's your guy, he's gonna run and then jump to the next building. How fast would you have to go there? And then here is a plane coming by with some velocity. And then how fast would he have to run to jump and catch the plane? And you could even have, have the plane going faster than him and he catches from the back, even though they show him catching up to the plane. But still, it's a pretty interesting kinematic problem. Uh, I think this guy's gonna have to run so super fast that he probably would do better just to go down the stairs, run to the airport, wait for the plane to get there, and then as the plane's landing, jump up and grab the, the wheel. That's what I would do if I were a superhero. Okay, next video. So it's a robot guy. There's a whole bunch of crazy stuff in this movie. I just picked this one uh, clip. And so they're trying to attack him and he just says, I'm gonna take all your guns. Magnet. Uh, now here's the biggest problem. How do magnets interact with non-magnetic material? Uh, they essentially magnetize them and then there's an attraction between two magnets. But if you look at the magnetic field due to let's say a coil of wire uh, as a function of distance from that, I don't know what that is. And so here's my coil of wire. I run an electric current through there and it has some size R, but the magnetic field goes like this. It, de it depends on the, the actual coil, but it drops off very, very, very fast. So if I want a magnetic field very far away, the, the strength is gonna have to be just ginormous. And on top of that, the attractive force would be very, very small because those aren't magnets themselves. They have to be magnetized. So being able to pull all those to you, pretty hard. And, and on top of that, it would work both ways. If robot dude is pulling the guns towards him, then they're pulling him too. So, and they have a very large mass. So, well, I don't know what his mass is. He's a robot, so maybe that's okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, I think this is my last clip. So here's this motorcycle jump. They're trying to jump over this bar and they raise it. So he's like, hey, I'll just jump off the back of the motorcycle. That's good. And then I'll grab the motorcycle. That's not good. So this is kind of conservation momentum. Think about it this way. Here's my motorcycle. And here's my guy. If I push on the motorcycle, then the motorcycle will go down and I will go up. But the momentum in that direction is conserved. That's cool. Okay, that works. Now, here's the motorcycle. Now it's moving down and you are moving maybe still, maybe this way. Now, how do you get back? Oh, you didn't think about that, huh? You can't get back to the motorcycle. Once you push away and go over the bar, that's it. Motorcycle's going that way. You're going another way. And you're not going to land on that motorcycle. Okay, so if you look at these clips, I just want to have you go and look at some other Bollywood physics clips. Try to get some numerical values for this stuff, and you can do some great physics homework problems. Okay, I'll see you guys later.